A brave young man I recently met told me that God has blessed all humans with many abilities and one doesn't become disabled by just losing one of these abilities. This young man, whose childhood dream was to become a lawyer one day, didn't let a setback along the way discourage him from achieving his goal. Though he's not there yet, he still believes that very soon he will become one of the best lawyers Ghana can ever boast of. He joins us on this edition of The Untold to share his life experiences. My name is Karutha Estete, a proud native of Winneba. Um, I'm currently working as a paralegal in Winneba. I actually had my blindness in 2002. I wasn't born with it. It was as a result of a drug reaction. So in class five, I remember the third term, I wasn't feeling well and my mom took me to a private hospital. So the injections that were given, unfortunately, I was allergic to them. The doctor too didn't know. So it affected the eye. I had to be uh, transferred to a fear quantum hospital. So it was there that they detected that I have suffered from a drug reaction. At a young age of 11, his parents couldn't easily accept that their son was going to live the greater part of his life in total darkness. At age 11, I was a football player. I couldn't go out to play football with my friends again. I couldn't go to the game center to play TV games. I couldn't do a lot of things because I've lost my sight. It was very challenging. You wake up crying. You want to go to school. You can't go to school. You want to go out and play with friends. You cannot because of, of, of your blindness. And my dad especially, you know, will, will move from one church to the other and they'll be telling all sorts of stories. Uh, this old woman is, is the cause. This old man is the cause. I mean, every, the story keeps changing from one church to the other. But I think what helped was when they realized that th this is a challenge and I needed to acquire education and that was the key. That was the key to make me an independent person. That was the key to make me be in a position to affect society positively. So it was, it was a difficult situation. They accepted and um, we, we had to move on. He had to leave his friends in school and move to a new environment, the Acropon School for the Blind. His first day at the school, which was in September 2003, is the day he finally came to terms with his new life. First day was uh, September 2003. That was actually when it dawned on me that life has really taken a different turn because I'm now going to be in the midst of people who are all blind. I was wondering how I could move around by myself. Is it that every day someone would have to you know, be with me? How I'm going to get food? How I'm going to do my washing? It was, it was very an emotional experience. It was very, very emotional. I remember my, my auntie, you know, it was so difficult for them to even leave me there I take crop homes, go for the blind, and come back to Winneba. But we had to do it. We had to accept the, the challenge. So it was, it was a very difficult experience. Very, very difficult. But um, God has been good. God has been good. I mean, there are, there are house mothers there who will encourage you, who will teach you. I mean, rehabilitation, they will help you move around, teach you one or two things for you to become independent. Caruthers had his secondary school education at the Okwapman Senior High School, which he says was a great experience. He says that is where he discovered his leadership abilities, rising through the ranks to become the Braille Library Prefect. Passing his NOVDEC, he moved to the University of Cape Coast to pursue a bachelor's degree in education, English and history graduating with a first class. I have certain principles and mantra in life that I follow. So um, at Cape Coast, 
I also had the opportunity to be the first visually impaired to be elected as the SRC representative at Atlantic Hall. So when I completed, by the grace of God, I also graduated with the overall best graduating student with visual impairment. That was 2015. From there, I had the opportunity to do my national service at the Department of English as a teaching assistant. So from there, I had the opportunity again to go back to study law. And in fact, reading law has, has been my, my interest from childhood. I always want to be in a position to advocate for the less privileged. I always want to be in a position to push for the rights of the less privileged. So that has been driving my interest through my life. So at the law school, by the grace of God, I excelled and I also graduated with first class. So what has been his driving force in life? What has kept me in life is that I realize challenges are part of our everyday life. But every successful man, you only become a successful man when you are able to overcome these challenges. You cannot allow yourself to be overwhelmed by the challenges. You need to find ways and means to overcome the challenges. And that is when you're able to do that, that is when you become a successful person. At every stage in my life, I set a target. When I got to the university, I realized visually impaired graduating in first class, uh, if not that it hasn't happened before, it has been um, so long a time. So I told myself, I'm going to achieve that. And that became my target. Then I needed to work towards it. And in doing so, I had to remain focused. I turned my ears to, I mean, I, I didn't really pay attention to what friends would say. I don't pay attention to what family members would say. I only work towards my target. I stay focused. And in doing that, I am very disciplined in whatever that I do. If I know that this is the time for me to do this, I am not distracted. I stay disciplined. And also, I, I try to be consistent. Above all, I think that faith. I always tell my friends that some days in life, all that you need, all that you need is faith. You just need faith to take that step. You just need faith to cross that, that bridge. And of course, prayers, prayers has, have also, uh, you know, worked for me. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I, I play active role in church. I, I sing. I'm an organist. Moving around in a new environment is one great challenge Caruthers, like other visually impaired people, face. When I'm in the house, you know, I've been in the house throughout my life, so I can move around, I know where the bedroom is, where the kitchen is, where to move to go out, where to move to get the seat. But when I go to a new environment, that is when I will need the assistance of someone else you realize bumping into others. I remember when I got to the university for the first time, the second day, I just fell into a gutter. You know, I, I had gone to the place the first day I came, I was going to the canteen. You know, so I, I thought that, oh, well, I could, I mean, I've been there before. So the second day, I was with my white skin, but I don't know how come my white skin deceived me. It was, but it was part of the learning process was part of the learning process. Sometimes you go and bump into something, a pillar. I've had some marks on my forehead. I have some marks on my leg. It's either you fall into a gutter or you bump into a pillar. Even at School for the Blind, you can even bump into your own colleague because both of you are blind. But you know, it's, it, you cannot do away with them. They are all learning experiences we had to learn and, and move on. He has had his fair share of discrimination and all these make him sometimes wish for the gift of sight. I needed a friend to, someone to assist me to the lecture theater. And the person, there was a guy, I don't know whether he thought blindness was contagious. Initially he didn't want to hold me, but he needed to hold me and you know, walk with me when we are descending a staircase, you tell me when we are crossing. So I told him, oh, please hold my hand. And he held the tip of my finger. You can imagine how 
how dehumanizing that was. But I, I needed the assistance too, so I just had to swallow my anger, my bitterness, and get out my tip. And I, I always till now, I try to wonder what at all will, what was he thinking, whether blindness is contagious. And you know, some people feel shy to work with people with disability. So you may be working with a friend. When he sees another friend, he would try to distance himself. He would try to, you know, play as if, oh, he is actually not working with you. Imagine, I mean, you, you can see, as I said, I was a football player. I played with my friends. I can no longer play with them. I can no longer walk out alone at age 11. And you ask yourself questions. Oh, what, what did I do wrong that I cannot see but my friends can see his love life hasn't been spared from discrimination as a woman he once loved left him because she believed he was going to become a burden to her discrimination in relationship trust me it is very real it is very very real discrimination sometimes from the person who claims she loves you or the family of the the, the lady and i'm speaking as a guy I believe that love conquers all and if the person has a genuine love, it doesn't matter your status, it doesn't matter what the family pressure may be, love conquers it all. But this particular instance, the person had accepted, but the parents had told her that I'm going to be a burden. I'm going to be a burden on her and she can't really move on in life. So she needed to stay away with me, and she did. And it was a very, very difficult situation. And it is currently affecting me, you know, because the, 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 this lady in question, on the surface, it appeared she loved me so very well, very, very much. But for her to have turned her back, simply because she has been convinced that I'm going to be a burden, I just don't do you I, I just don't trust the next person because the initial stages it may be good we'll get to the middle then they'll come up with excuses but i believe that when you find a genuine love it doesn't matter the the challenges it doesn't matter the pressure from the society caruthers is currently doing an internship with a law firm in winneba and sat for the law school entrance exam but was part of those who suffered the mass failure. So last year, I wrote the entrance exams and I, I couldn't get the opportunity to further. Um, they said we have failed. <laughs> I, I believe that uh, I didn't fail, but that was the verdict. But we don't give up. We don't give up. I couldn't make it. And I was thinking that you see, I, I believe that it's high time we put systems and measures in place to support people like myself who have been able to make it this far to go through. We can treat people differently to ensure equality. I don't use pen and paper. I use either my laptop or I use what we call Braille. What you use is different, what I use is different, but at the end of it all, we are all going to be treated equally. We are all, I mean, there, there is an equality, just that the means are different, the treatments are different. So there could be systems in place that even if you have a law degree as a person with disability, there could be a chance for you to enter the law school. Because at the end of it all, you are coming out to help the society. I could. I didn't decide to sit by the roadside and beg. I didn't decide to sit in the house and be a burden to my family or be a burden to government. I have decided to go to school to acquire legal education to support the less privileged. So if by the grace of God I've acquired the law degree, first class with distinction, and I don't get the opportunity to enter the law school, it, 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 it's a big blow, but you can't give up. Caruthers, who describes himself as an advocate for the less privileged in society, shared his long-term aspirations with us. As a great lawyer, 
who is advocating for the less privileged in the society, as a great lawyer who is defending the voiceless, as a great lawyer who is championing the cause of the nation, even beyond. I love to serve my country in any capacity. I love to serve my country, but I, I envisage in future I will contest a political. Currently, I am part of my unit committee, and um, I'm using that as a preparatory ground for higher, higher opportunities. But I want to serve my country in, in any capacity, whether as a member of parliament, whether as a minister, or as a president. And in order to achieve this, we need to start from the grassroots. And I believe uh, we are on course. And in the next 20, 25 years, there should be a history that is going to be told to the next generation. He also mentions the names of some lawyers in the country that he looks up to. Lawyer Evelyn Apia, she's a great lawyer. Uh, Dr. Corey, a uh, few others I look up to. But my role model is Ankuma, lawyer is Ankuma. I, I love the way he makes his analysis. Uh, though I've not had the chance to meet him personally, he once came to my school, University of Cape Coast, to give a lecture and I admire him so much. I love to meet him in, in future. His family, he says, has been a major pillar in his life as they always encourage him to do his best. Thumbs up to my mom, my aunties, my uncles and my church. They've been very, very supportive, very, very supportive. You know, these times we just need support and encouragement. Sometimes you just need someone to tell you, you can make it, just a word, and it will change a whole lot. You just need someone to tell you, to appreciate the little that you've done, and it will change the, the course. That is all that we need from the society. Karuthas encourages the physically challenged in Ghana not to allow their disability to limit them in life. God has blessed us with a lot of abilities. The ability to see, the ability to hear, the ability to walk, several abilities. The fact that you have lost one or two abilities does not make you a disabled person. You always say to yourself, I can make it. Don't make your mind that I need to fall on this person before I can make it known. Sometimes you have to create the opportunities yourself. Sometimes you have to make that step. Sometimes you have to make that move. If you say you are always dependent on someone, you will always remain where you are. <laughs>